Hey guys, it's Kelsey and back with another scrapbooking process video and this is another layout for the Secret and Secret Kit Club's party weekend. Uh, this was from December's party weekend so Angela had challenged us to get some plaid on a page and this was tricky for me. I was like, oh piece of cake, let me go so find some plaid, throw a layout together. I could not find plaid. I have, I do have some plaid but I'm, I'm saving it for Christmas stuff because Jennifer had sent me some Christmas papers so I would have some Christmas supplies and I want to use it for Christmas the next time I have Christmas layouts. And I loved the plaid, so I didn't want to use it for a non-Christmas layout, uh, which is what I had to work with. So I dug through my scraps and my stash and finally realized that I have a little smidgen of a green plaid in my warm and cozy paper pad, which is just down to the dregs. I have barely any of this paper pad left, but I decided if I could try and use it in multiple areas, hopefully I could squeak by in this uh, challenge. So I have the um, paper pad Lisa sent me called Welcome Home, and I decided to use that for the main layers. I loved all the pattern in it, very like neutral and cozy, and because this, um, photo is very warm and cozy. It has Billy in it and one of my houseplant babies. I thought that it would be perfect. So I'm just pretty much stealing a, like a newsprint paper scrap and the green plaid from the warm and cozy collection. Everything else other than the background, which is another Christmassy paper Jennifer sent me, but I was okay using this speckly one instead of the plaid. <laughs> Uh, for this one so uh, yeah that's why I decided to go with I definitely wanted a green uh, because it's about plants instead of a uh, red plaid which is the other plaid I had to work with so I was happy I found this green plaid but I'm just going through all these scraps and trying to figure out what I have to work with I get a good bit of six by six papers used up on this uh, page though so I'm very happy about that but it just took me a minute to get organized and try and figure out how I was going to pull this off just because I just did not have very much of that plaid left. Um, but I have this one 4x4 four four here. Uh, this is just a photo of <laughs> one of my new plants. I don't know if it's just a millennial thing, so let me know if you're not a millennial and you went through this. But I feel like me and all my friends who are also millennials went through this thing during COVID where we became houseplant addicts. We went from literally having two plants to a hundred and I don't, I don't know. I mean, it makes sense. We're all like in the house more and we want to be outside. So we just bring the outside in and I don't know what happened. I had an aloe that I had kept alive for about a year. I just, I never thought I would be a good plant person. I just, I'm, I thought I would just kill them, but I had an aloe I'd kept alive for about a year. And then I took home a Christmas poinsettia from church last year because after Christmas they give everyone, like, you can take the poinsettias home when they're done with them. So I was like, sure, I'll take a poinsettia home and it can just live in my house until it dies. And it never crossed my mind that it wouldn't die. So we're here over a year later and uh, it's still kicking, my little poinsettia. So after about six months of it still living, I was like, oh, maybe I can have house plants. It's like, I never thought about having house plants just because I just didn't think they would live, but I've kept these two plants alive, so let me try. So I did my research and I tried to find uh, some plants that I thought would be easy for me to start out with. And I came home with this little one here, which is a Sansevieria. It's in the snake plant family. This one's called a bird's nest snake plant or a Sansevieria honey eye. And it is so cute. These things are drought tolerant. They are low light tolerant and they're adorable. And I, I brought this thing home and it just, I don't know what happened. I have over 30 plants now. And I only started with two and I don't really know how that happened, but I love it. If anyone wants a houseplant tour, I would be happy to film one and show you all of my houseplants. <laughs> but I definitely wanted to document this one just because it started it all, man. I started with an aloe and a poinsettia and I brought home this little Sansevieria honey eye. And from there it just, you know, a bomb went off in my house and now there's plants everywhere. This one, I do have to say, this particular one, it looks like the top of a pineapple. I think it is so cute. And I've been I've been wanting to say this and tell this to Crystal from Pineapple Paper since forever. So Crystal, if you're watching, I think about this an unhealthy amount. And 
someone tag Crystal or something in this video so she can see this adorable plant. But I know she likes pineapples, right? Pineapple papers. And every time I see this plant, because it's in my scrap room now, I think how she needs this plant and she needs to pot it in a pot that looks like the bottom of a pineapple so that together it looks like a whole pineapple. <laughs> So it's a living, not real pineapple. I don't know. I just really think she needs one of these in her scrap room because they, they don't need anything from you. You hardly ever have to water it. Uh, and it's low light tolerant. And I think that it would just be, <laughs> she needs one. <laughs> you need one of these, Crystal. Because if you found a little pineapple pot for it, it would look so cute. Um, but anyways, <laughs> I don't know. I felt compelled to share that information. But yeah. Um, I'm kind of curious, this is super off topic, but this whole video is just me layering and layering and layering. Uh, so I really don't know how to explain that that's all I'm doing. So while I have time <laughs> to ask random questions, I want to know what houseplants you guys have, because I'm curious. I have um, three different pothos, African violet, I have a couple snake plants, I have a couple succulents. And I just, I want to know what you guys have because I'm always <laughs> on the look nowadays. Um, I moved one of my pothos next to my bed and now it's like grew and grew and grew. And now there's all these vines on the floor. So I don't know if I'm going to have to put it up somewhere higher soon. Um, but yeah, I'm just curious and I want to know. Um, but I definitely wanted to pull this wood grain in a lot. I love this wood grain that's in the Welcome Home collection. That's super homey. And this photo is on my coffee table, which is wood. Um, so I really wanted to pull out that warm brown tone because there are a lot of kind of greens and white layers going on. So I really want to bring in the warmth of the brown. So I'm trying to get that wood grain in a couple places. Uh, so you can see me just trying to layer that up again. I think I already have one mat of that wood grain, but I'm trying to add another one. And... How much more do I got? Here's that little newspaper scrap from the Welcome Home collection. So I'm just going to stack that on either side to kind of branch out a little bit horizontally. Uh, just because my squares were all, look my layers were all looking very square. So I wanted to break that up a little bit with having some bits just coming out from the sides. And then I think I'll just do a couple, couple more. But I love this little um, cluster here. I want this kind of photo in the bottom right hand corner of the page. And then I'm thinking I'm gonna have a cluster in the upper left-hand corner, and I want a bunch of paper layers in that as well, whatever I end up doing up there. Um, well, sorry, I'm in bed, I have to get comfortable. There we go. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm kind of just trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with the, the rest of the page once I'm done with all these layers, but right now I'm just trying to use up as much of this six by six paper pad as possible. <laughs> so I don't even know where I went right now. I might cut this and try to, oh, there, I'm back again. Okay, yeah, so there's a cut apart piece here, and I wanted to use the wood grain little skinny strip that says a house is made of walls and, and beams, a home is made of love and dreams. And I thought that was so cute because <laughs> now that I actually have house plants, I can't imagine my house without them. Like once I started adding them to my house, it just changed the whole, like, I thought my house was cute and cozy and homey before, but when you add a house plant, like it just changes, I don't know, it just brings that life into your space. So I thought that quote was very appropriate because now that I have plants everywhere, it feels extra cozy and homey. <laughs> so especially right now, because I'm, as I'm filming this, we have our Christmas tree up. And so um, there's nothing quite like having a giant tree in the middle of your house <laughs> for a plant mom. Um, but yeah. Adding some more bits. I really like this gray layer. It kind of looked cement, cement textured, um, but I like that gray because it kind of breaks up all of the uh, whites going on. So I definitely wanted to get a good chunk of that. Bless you, Billy. You're being so loud. Billy's laying in bed with me again as I'm doing voiceovers. So <laughs> he's feeling left out. So he's trying to get my attention by rolling around and being funny. Anyways, I am going in. I knew I had this little houseplant sticker, which it looks, it looks like that's, it looks like my plant. I don't know if that one canoe two drew this based off of the Sansevieria honey eye, but it looks like my plant. So I definitely wanted to use that in my little cluster. Uh, so I figured that would just be my little star 
uh, up in the cluster for my upper left hand corner and I thought that was cute because not only are my paper layers going to balance and kind of mirror themselves across the page but the the actual <laughs> content of my photo is going to be mirrored and replicated up in that cluster too so I had a little cactus uh, die cut set out from uh, Kelly had sent it it was a Felicity Jane die cut that she included and I was saving it for a houseplant page um, but then I saw one can new two's little sticker and decided to use that instead because I actually have pictures of some succulents and uh, I wanted to save the cactus for that page instead of this one but I think that little sticker is so perfect but I think I'm just trying to I'm trying to see what I'm, I'm doing am I still layering I'm trying to squeeze in more of that plaid um, I kind of felt bad that there was so little plaid on this page when that was the challenge but I'm trying to take any little opportunity where I can add a little layer or a little detail to make it that green plaid so I did just cut a little plaid uh, banner out of another scrap of that green I was able to salvage so I figured I'd have that branching out from behind this little uh, cut apart wooden border piece <laughs> to kind of have it sit on something to the left of the photos here um, so that added another little pop of plaid, which was nice. And now I'm trying to start on that cluster up there. I'm definitely trying to make sure that my paper layers are balanced for, uh, try and bring in all of the colors and a lot of the, not all of them, but a lot of the papers I used down here around my photo, I want to try and pull up to the top, especially the patterns that kind of grab your attention. That way you can see immediately that it's pretty balanced. And so the first, uh, pattern paper that I matted the photo in was this yellow, which is the only yellow on the page. So I wanted to make sure that yellow was a predominant layer up in the upper left hand corner too. So it's going to be the first thing I put this house plant on. And then from there I will layer around that with some of these other bits similar to how I did with the photo. So I'm pulling in another scrap of that little green plaid. I had to make sure that was up there. I'm pulling in a scrap of the black and white stripe. I feel like that's another pattern that kind of grabs your attention down there next to the photo. So I want that up there too. Uh, so I'm trying to get all that glued down. I don't know if I mentioned, but you will have seen through this whole video, I'm inking everything again. <laughs> I'm using brown on this one. And then one of the other cut apart pieces was like blueprints for a house. So I really wanted to get that used up on this page too, just because that seems to be the theme of this page is hominess of a house, you know? even though it's about my plant. <laughs> so I just tucked that in at the top of those layers too, just to add another little layery bit. So there's that. And then um, I wanted more of that yellow because once I added yellow up there at the top, I realized the yellow wasn't really represented too much down by the photo. So I'm adding a second layer <laughs> of that yellow uh, on the bottom of the page, just so that's really balanced across, across the page. And I think that helps too. And then I have a scrap of this wood grain. I definitely want that in the upper left hand corner. So I'm cutting a banner out of that. That will stick in towards the, the right side of the cluster. And that's gonna kind of mimic the banners down here on the bottom left side of the photo. Um, but again, that also pulls in more wood grain up there so that warmer tone is introduced. <laughs> so I definitely want that, that one. The plaid and the wood grain and the yellow I definitely want I want balanced <laughs> so I think I'm doing a, an okay job of that so far uh, I definitely want a few more layers here so I'm just trying to see what I have to the left there <laughs> I think I have another scrap of the newspapery print that I have sticking out of the sides of the photo so I'm going to stick that out of the side of the layer up there and then I think I definitely add in a couple more scraps of that green plaid <laughs> to try and get as much as I can in there too. Um, but I kind of got stuck for a second up there. So again, I'm adding more down to the photo, which I'm just deciding to add another uh, banner next to that plaid, plaid because the plaid is green and the background is green. So I thought adding a white banner behind the green one would help you see it a little bit better plus layers, it adds more. <laughs> more is more on this page. And I just had a whole cup of coffee, if you can't tell. So I'm just on a roll. <laughs> um, I had a lot of fun this party weekend where I'm making all these secret, secret kit club layouts. So I've just been whew, making all the things. And this was definitely a fun one for me. But I think I'm trying to see, yep, adding more plaid. 
I didn't plaid to the top. And I think I cut plaid into another banner too, so that it would kind of be mimicked with the wood grain. That way there's two banners down by the photo and there's two banners up by the house plant. So I'm liking it though. I think I'm almost done, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> with all my layering and then I just get to embellish. I definitely want a title. I already know I'm going to call it Plant Mom 100%. And then I definitely need to do some journaling because I definitely want to kind of say what I told you <laughs> about all of these plants. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. I'm actually surprised I didn't already glue this down. <laughs> but I'm going to glue it down to the bottom right side. I'll get that cluster glued down to the upper left. And then I kind of wasn't sure title wise what I was going to use. I really wanted to use some white foam. But I need to get some more white foam alphas because I am um, didn't have the letters I needed in like every single white foam alphabet for this title. Uh, but I did find these gray ones, which I thought was kind of nice because it played off of the gray of that one cement colored layer. And I thought it was kind of an unexpected color to use. So I decided just to roll with it. I'm titling it Plant Mom, so I'm just going to stick that on the top of my photo layers. And then I think I do my journaling next. I'm trying to remember what order I did everything in, but I'm going to get plant mom down and then journal. And I'm just going to journal in my white pen because I thought it would show up really nice on this green. <laughs> um, so I, I'm definitely going to draw lines too. So you see me just using my grid mat to kind of line them up, but I'm just decided to have journaling running down the left of the page down from this cluster just to kind of direct your eye down the page, I guess. <laughs> but drawing lines. I don't think I draw all of them right away because I'm not quite sure how much I'm going to say. So I think you'll see me draw some lines, start my journaling, run out of lines, draw more. <laughs> but that's usually how it happens because I'm always worried I'll draw more lines than I need or something and there'll be leftover space. But all I'm going to say is after keeping an aloe alive for about a year and after Christmas and a Christmas poinsettia alive for six months, I decided to get some more house plants. The sweet Saint Severia honey eye was the first of many new additions. As with most millennials during COVID, plants became a comforting, stress relieving addiction. And then I just dated it. This was from June uh, 2020. And I thought that kind of summed it up pretty well. <laughs> um, at this point, I, I hadn't had as many plants as I, as I ever thought I would have um, when I took this photo, but now knowing what has happened over the past six months to my house, <laughs> I thought I should kind of uh, lead into that through my journaling. Um, and then I just want to embellish a little bit. Um, I just got some cork hearts from redefinecreative.com. Um, and I wanted to get them used up and I really thought the warm tone of the cork would kind of play off of the wood grain I already have on this page. So that's pretty much all I embellish with and it stays pretty simple other than that. I think the star is all of the layering <laughs> um, and I definitely didn't want to overshadow this cute little house plant sticker. Um, so I think the adding the cork hearts was kind of the finishing touch that was nice. So after I get my journaling down <clears throat> I'll go in with my hearts and I didn't know this these cork hearts are already adhesive backed so you just pull off the sheet on the back and it's already sticky it was amazing I had no idea I went to glue them down <laughs> and realized that there was a backing on them and that I pulled the backing off and they are already sticky so that was really nice <laughs> it's a nice surprise because I wasn't expecting that um, but I just want a little cork heart up here by this little houseplant sticker I kind of want some bigger hearts by the title just because the title is kind of big and I have space to use over there. And then I wanted to create a visual triangle, therefore the most natural place for my third cluster is down by the banner at the below uh, on the photo. So I'm just trying to figure out which sizes I want paired up where. Um, but I definitely decided that the, the biggest one goes up by the title with a semi-smaller one that's still proportional. And then the next biggest one can go down in the other cluster with the small heart. And then I just wanted a tiny heart with this little house plant sticker so it didn't overwhelm it too much, but it still brought that texture and that color up there. So I'm just going to get all this stuck down. But here are the close-ups. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. <laughs> Bye.